Hey, how's it going, class? This is your instructor, Mr. Kun Tran, uh, here to show you a little bit about uh, working in After Effects, uh, as well as uh, creating a character ring from Photoshop to After Effects. Okay, so Miss Megan Williams has provided me with this uh, nice little sketch here of a hula girl. Um, I'm going to finish it off for a little bit just to show you how I paint in Photoshop uh, and then I'll show you how to import this in After Effects as well as pin it up with the puppet tool uh, and get it ready for animation. Okay, so first off, um, let's start by looking at these layers here. So she had already separated um, the layers. Um, so the body is its own separate layer, we've got the skirt is its own separate layer, bra, uh, even hair layers as well, okay, and back hair layers, okay. So just a good rule of thumb, if anything is moving, um, just make sure it's a separate layer. It's the easiest step, okay. Um, Alright, so uh, control plus and minus will allow you to zoom in. I'm going to hide everything and just kind of paint her up a little bit. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select um, this line work that she had already done. I'm going to go over here to select, modify, and expand. And just expand it by a couple pixels just so that the line is like right underneath the uh, line work. Um, then I'm going to make a new layer underneath the body layer and choose a and color, use the paint bucket, fill it in, okay, uh, then let go. So now what I'm going to do is add a, couple bit, a little bit of shadow, uh, one more spot here that's left over, okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow, let's make sure it's get the fingers in there, uh, I'm going to do that real quick, there we go, okay. Now, uh, if you go over here to this lock transparency button, if we click that, we can't draw anything outside of the color that we've already placed it. Okay, so use the shadow. Boom. Okay, I'm using a soft brush just to add a bit of detail here. Good. Go. We're just gonna make sure that area is not coming down a bit. All right. So that's cool. So then we're going to uh, unlock this now and fuse it with our line work. So to fuse it, you just hit Control V -E like that. Okay. Then we turn on the other layer. So we're going to make a, and it's important to fuse it because you don't want a whole bunch of layers uh, open in After Effects. It'll get confusing. So what I'm doing is I'm just picking a color for the skirt, and we're going to do the same technique as we did before. We're going to use our Magic Wand tool to select the area of fill that we want, and then we go over here to the Select, Expand, let's expand by 4 pixels. There. And then we're just going to use our uh, paint bucket and fill it in. Now there's going to be spots because you know the magic wand tool is not perfect. So um, we are just going to use our brush to fill in the little gaps here. If anything, it uh, allows us to um, it allows us to get in there quickly and fill it all in. Okay, so the same thing we did before, we're going to turn this lock on, then we pick a darker color. Remember, black is black, so you don't want to use black. 
Let me just use a darker color. This, and this area in, and if you want to, um, well, we'll get to that. We're going to go ahead and fuse those together. Uh, F5 is the brush tool, and then we can switch black brushes or just pick another brush. I'm going to add a little bit of detail right on top. Now, it's important not to get stuck on detail, but you know, sometimes it's okay. And a little bit of detail just to show that this is a grass skirt. And all I'm doing is I'm just picking another brush and then drawing the lines down. It gives the illusion that we're adding more detail than what we are. Okay, all right, so there's a skirt, now we're going to do the bra. Okay. So the bra is a red color, so again, same technique, we're going to, uh, instead of using the magic wand tool, we're just going to use the lasso tool this time. And if you have the same technique, this will make it really easy for you. If not, then just use the magic wand tool. Red, move it up a little. Okay, used. Oh, so we skipped this step there. We didn't have to use the. Uh, we didn't have to use the. Um, we didn't have to use the uh, quick selection tool. Sorry. Okay. Let me just do this real quick, and then I'll explain what's going on. Okay, so by using the lasso tool, we skipped the magic wand tool and the expansion step, okay? Um, just because this area is small enough to you know, quickly select that with the lasso tool. Now, for the whole body like this, that wouldn't uh, be feasible because, you know, you've got to draw all the way up and down the body here, uh, and it's just, uh, it would be kind of a big pain, okay? Um, but with the bra, it's just, you know, a small area, so depending on how fast you are with the um, lasso tool um, or your ability to select something, that's what you choose for that tool. Okay, so these techniques, think of it as, um, okay, if I were given a situation, what's the fastest way to get this thing done? Okay, and then you pick the fastest way. So. That's why I picked the last tool over the magic wand tool because it's fast and you just like this bra, fill it in and then add detail versus using the magic wand tool, um, expanding the magic wand tool, filling it in and then brushing in the you know the little gaps that comes with the magic wand tool. So that's why I did that. All right, so now we got the hair. So here's the front here. Again, again, same technique. I'm just going to go in with the lasso tool and just select everything here. Oh. And blue, grab paint bucket. There we go. And we'll grab the same green that was over here. Well, we'll save that one. We're going to fill this in, then add that green color. When I painted earlier, it wasn't adding because the bottom layer was below the, the line with glare. So when I combined them, it uh, fused those two together. Now I'm using the lasso tool to erase um, an escaped object there. Okay. So far, I'm pretty good. Then we got the back hair. Back hair is right here. We turn everything off. And I'm not even going to use like another layer. 
it is going to directly go on top. Because since this hair is all the way in the back, it's not necessary to um, you know, be super detailed with it. People aren't going to see it the uh, majority of the time. Just realized that the bra is a ton so I'm going to combine those. Alright, so everything is colored in. Say I'm ready to import this into After Effects. Here is how you do it. First of all, you want to save this somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and save this on my desktop. Okay, then I'm going to close this down. Uh, also, Layers by layers, okay. Just keep that in mind. Let's close that down. Just open up After Effects. All right, we are in After Effects, and now we are ready to import our project. So here's what you do. You want to go to the Project tab uh, and double click on an empty area here. Okay. Now, all we have to do is find that Photoshop file that we just sent down. I saved it on my desktop, so here it is. Open it up, and it's going to ask me a couple questions. It's going to ask me what kind of uh, input do I want. I want a composition, retain layer sizes. Okay, Hit OK. Well, actually, just composition. So, retain layer sizes means it's going to take into consideration of the sizes that you had in Photoshop. So. Right now, we just need the um, hula girl in as a composition, so we don't really need to maintain the sizes. But we do want to make sure that the editable layer styles are checked, okay? And we don't want to merge layer styles into uh, the footage. So we'll hit OK. Double click, click on the hula girl, and here are our layers right here. If we zoom out a little bit, there is our hula girl, uh, and she is ready to be. Um, she is ready to be uh, rigged up. So first thing we need to do, here is her body, right? She is around everything <laughs> this like uh, moving without her. So we need to make sure that um, when we rig her up, she's gonna that when she moves, everything else moves along with her. So all we have to do is select each layer that's not the body. So I did that by putting down shift to select the top then letting go of shift, then hitting control to select the last one, okay? So shift allows you to select multiple, uh, and then control uh, or command allows you to um, select the um, the layer that's not part of the same uh, row. So for example, if I click here, and then hold down shift, and click at the very top, it'll select that. But if I did this, it'll select all of them. And then I can, um, but control or um, control will allow you to select one at a time like that. So control is a little bit more um, uh, deep, uh, flexible when it comes to what you can select. Anyways, so all we have to do is drag one of these little swirly things over here. If you don't see this, you can click on this toggle button here. Well, it'll be on it on both ways, anyways. So you just want to drag it over to the body. Okay, so that the parent is the body. So basically what we did was we said that um, layer 1, 2, 3, and 5 uh, will use layer 4 or body 2 as the parent. And we can visually see that here. Okay, so now when we move the body, 
everything moves along with it. That's what we want. Okay, so now what we want to do is um, use the um, puppet tool on the body layer. Okay, so here's the puppet tool. It's really easy to use. So we're going to click here, here, basically wherever a joint is. Okay. You just need it to make sense um, to you. Okay, so there it's that for the body. Um, but I'm going to also do one for the skirt. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to do one for the hair because that's a layer that's going to be moving a lot. One, two, three, four. Okay. And yeah, front here, not so much. So here's what you can do. Um, if you hold down Control Command while having one of these um, dots selected, uh, it'll allow you to uh, move them around and the timeline will scroll forward in time. So for example, while I'm holding down Control, you see this um, clock here? This means that I can um, now animate um, using the mouse and using the program, watching my actions and recording it. So watch. Cool, right? So all of this white stuff right here are our paths. So if I zoom in a little bit further, you see how uh, now it's recorded the path there. And when I hit play. It, it, it's taking my actions. Okay, so now I'm going to do the game with this one. Yeah, okay, I'll do the same with this one. layers, we can now see the hair moving back and forth. Cool, right? And what we'll do too is turn the timing of this down a little bit, okay? Because right now it's set for nine seconds and we just want a little flip flip. Okay, so once we um, move this, so all I did was I like, grab this blue area right here and then Drag it all the way down to where my work area is, which is right up here. Then I can right click on this gray area and then tr um, tr trim comp to work area. So it's going to trim the whole comp to this area right here. Okay. This will allow the computer to free up some, um, some space for us to work with. Okay, now. We're going to do the same thing with the skirt. Now, if you don't see the yellow dots anymore, you can use your selection tool and just go down to uh, expand your layer, and then select public, and you'll be able to see it. So now we're going to do the same here. Uh, and then again, hold down control. Swing back. same thing with this one. So select this one, hold down shift, select that one, and then hold down control. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. This automatically adds a lot of follow through, overlap, all that stuff. Okay. So this one's a little further uh, apart than what we want. So what we can do is 
is um, in these pins here, just find the ones that um, are too far apart. We're going to select these keyframes here, and then go over here to the graph editor. On this it'll automatically zoom everything in. So if this is going left to right, then you need the red line because the, the red is the x values, whereas the y is the um, y or the green is the y values. So what we need to do is select all of this red here, and we can move it up or down. Make sure you just move it. So, there should be a way to only show uh, just the area that I have selected. Okay, so what I did was I click here, turn off both of these, and then kept this one, this show selected properties on. Because um, then that that will allow me to um, select pro, uh, position on public pin point four, and then position again in public pin point three, and I'm holding down control to select both of them. Then I can select these right here and move it from the left to the right. There we go. So now, I just want this one. Okay. Oh, wrong one. Just want this one. No, this one. Here we go. Okay. So now I'm selecting the number two by accident. these right here are what's causing it to go down. So I'll just raise these back those up. And yeah, there we go. This one. Oh. So what you can do is delete some frames if it doesn't look the way it should. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of movement here. Then I'm going to position the body where I want it to be. So again, let's turn off the curve editor mode. Uh, and then we can go over here to And if you don't want to mess with the curve editor, you can just undo the animation that we did in the skirt and just redo it. It doesn't take too much to just redo it uh, so that the skirt doesn't go past the legs. Uh, here we go. Okay, so here's the puppet um, tool. You need to be in, in frame one, otherwise it'll start like over here. You don't want that. So there's frame one, and I'm just going to position her where we think she is a natural. Naturally position. Okay, the, the puppet pinpoints will naturally go behind the character. If you want um, the character's arm to go above 
uh, the character and you just have to separate the arms from the body. That's just the way it is. That looks a little bit more natural. So what I'm going to do is we'll just have our hula. Uh, and then we'll just that means that the skirt's going to have to move along as well. I should have put a point there, but hold on. There's a way to make these points follow like and stuff automatically, but that's more advanced. Save that for you for later. So, uh, markers are really useful too to help you gauge where um, the hair or, or something should be. So that's, I mean, we can just keep continue animating. Um, that's just uh, a few ways to uh, animate um, and inputting from After Effects to Photoshop. The next step for this would be actually creating a composition layer um, that has the you know, 1280 by 720 that we've been working with. Okay, okay. And then we can uh, just name this uh, in the summer time. Uh -huh. Let's just, yeah. Then we're going to drag our hula lady in there and shrink it down because she's a little bit too big. Okay, that's that. Then we'll import some uh, background art uh, that we did. I didn't do any, so I'm just going to go to Google and grab some. But you have to create your own, okay? So... Looking on the internet... Now I'm going to import uh, background. So I'm going to make a new folder called this background or images or whatever. And I click import file. So I did that on the background because then it'll uh, up import into that folder. Which is what I want. There we go. So I'm real ugly. I lied. So let's drop this in there. So now we can put this behind her. Okay, so 
again, we need to uh, move this uh, range, workspace range, and then trims the workspace. So there she is. Uh, now I'm going to do something kind of cool. I'm going to turn both of these layers into 3D layers. If you don't see this right here, you just hit the toggle and it will show up. Okay. Then I'm going to right click on the blank area and say new camera. Okay. So there's a new camera. I'm just going to leave everything the same. Okay. So now I can use a camera to zoom in and zoom out. Cool, right? So that means I just need to make sure my hula girl is um, smaller. Okay, there she is. You know hula girl. Then I need to do a couple things here. I need to add keyframes to the um, point of interest in the position. Then drag these to the beginning. And then hitting C on my keyboard, I can uh, rotate through the tools that are in here and pick the zoom in tool. So now I'm zoomed in, then hit C again for the move tool, which is the one with the arrow. There we go. Uh, then I'm going to add a blur effect to this background because I don't want it to be very visible. Uh, zoom blur should be fine. Add more blur to the earth. And then see what that looks like there. Repeat the edges just because. Okay, so that went by too quick. So I'm going to need to move these a little further and then add the easy ease. Or, yeah, easy ease. See that? So yours should look a lot cooler. And then I'm gonna add, go ahead and add sound. So go back to my project tab. Um, let's import the sound. Let's see. I need that sound somewhere. Music, there we go. Let's do cherry, um, cherry boxes. I actually made this song too, so it's legit. Okay. Um, then we can also create uh, um, a new um, adjustment layer. Okay. Uh, and go over to the controls, go over to effects, and Color correction, you can add the curves correction. Okay. Then we can select the uh, rectangular tool and select over the curves selection. Set this to subtract and then turn the feather up so that we get like a nice vignette. Feel. Basically, a cool shape to bring attention to our um, subject here. So, zoom out. And that looks nice. So, if I wanted to render this out, all I have to do is go with the position. Add to render queue, or you can go to uh, MIDI encoder. But add to render queue, um, change this to. Sorry, you want to click the word lossless over here to QuickTime. Okay, change the format to. Uh, instead of animation, you want H.264. Okay, is okay. Uh, keep everything else the same. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you're uh, rendering out, out audio as well. So make sure this is set to audio or auto. Then hit OK. Then we can specify where we want it to be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and 
pop this on my desktop again, save, then render. And then it renders out the project. So that is it. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, you should now know how to create uh, a rig from Photoshop, import it into After Effects, um, rig it up with the Pub Pen tool, and uh, as well as using parenting, creating a 3D camera, and um, adding an adjustment layer, as well as adding an adjustment color correction uh, to your projects. Um, so hopefully with this knowledge you can add just that next level of um, production quality to your animations, okay? So obviously um, this project, um, you know, it's uh, it's pretty decent, but you should be able to do something much, much better with more time, uh, okay? So if you have any other questions, just hit me up, and uh, hopefully I can answer them.